Good morning. It's great to see all of you here today. So environmental sustainability has been a shared global concern for quite some time now. Uh, but I think this year, perhaps more than any other year, we've been seeing a lot of the very acute impacts around the environment and a lot of the needs that we have in this space. Uh, earlier this past summer, we saw heat waves that sort of uh, spanned around the globe, uh, including here in Europe, uh, which in turn led to a number of cloud data centers going down. And as we look forward, uh, things are only going to get more challenging. Uh, on the one hand, uh, we can already see that we have a shortage of raw materials around the world. A lot of our supply chains are being disrupted, and our energy prices are going up and up and up. There's a lot of questions about what's going to happen this winter. On the other hand, we continue to see that our energy uh, usage is only going to increase. Uh, so by 2025, for example, the amount of energy towards data centers is going to go up by 21%. And this has big impacts, not just uh, on us as people on the Earth, uh, but also on all life and biodiversity. So if you would want to take a look at how do we address uh, these big, big challenges, we've also got to consider what do we do as a technology industry together, because we have an important role to play in terms of how do we address a lot of these issues. Now, if we're going to use technology and address these problems from a tech standpoint, it's going to also have to be in open source. Because whether we take a look at the cloud, or as we come into our environments from an edge, or if we take a look at all the devices that we carry with us, one of the key things that all these different technologies share is that they're all built on open source. So I want to take a little tour today briefly just to talk about some of the things that we're doing in open source across these different domains to try to drive uh, towards a much more sustainable future. So let's go ahead and start from a cloud data center standpoint. So, one of the big things that we've been focused on is how do we fundamentally and increasingly drive the energy efficiency of our technologies within cloud data centers? Uh, one of the designs that we've been very much focused on in Huawei Cloud is building heterogeneous architectures, so different hardware processors focused on different workloads, and then using different software platforms on top of that to optimize the usage of this hardware. Uh, so, for example, we have our Open Euler uh, Linux distribution, which is highly, highly optimized to take advantage of ARM architectures and CPUs. This combination can give us a, up to 50% increase in energy efficiency. When we take a look at AI workloads, you know, these are some of the biggest workloads that we have in cloud. You know, our minds for you know, open source AI framework on top of NPUs uh, can give us a 98% energy efficiency increase you know, compared to traditional processors, especially if you take a look at dedicated NPUs such as our own Ascent line. And then for some of the biggest workloads that we have across cloud, you know, here we've been working in the CNCF on the Volcano project. With this, we can start to schedule workloads with a 60% increase in utilization across all the existing hardware from our clouds. And if you take all these things, it adds up to very dramatic energy savings from a cloud data center standpoint. And so we think that this is an important thing that we also have to take a look at. You know, how do we optimize the performance of our software in order to be able to improve our data centers? Now, how do we bring all these capabilities out of our data centers into the environments at the edge? This is something that we've been doing with another project we have here at the CNCF, uh, KubeEdge. Uh, one of the things that we've been doing is that uh, we've been working with a lot of different smart buildings around the world. Uh, so how do you use artificial intelligence to automate uh, the lighting systems, the HVAC systems, the electrical appliances, and so on? And by bringing a lot of those same technologies I spoke about in the cloud data center into these physical environments, uh, we're seeing an average uh, energy savings of about 18% across different smart buildings. Now, if you multiply that by the number of buildings there are here in Europe and across the world, that's a big, big impact we can have around the world. Now, what about all the millions and billions of devices that we carry around in our pockets and that we have in our homes? Uh, this is actually a surprisingly big consumer of energy. Uh, in fact, if you take a look at all the different connected devices, one of the big challenges that we have today is that even if your devices are trying to talk to each other and they're only a few centimeters apart, they all have to maintain a cloud connection and go to the cloud and then come back to the device uh, sitting right next to it. And if you add up all the connections to the cloud that these smart devices are maintaining, uh, just over the next several years in our home, this actually adds up to, uh, to the equivalent energy consumption of 31,500 megawatt coal power plants. That's a lot of energy uh, just to maintain a connection from one device uh, to another. 
So one of the other things that we've been building is a new open source operating system for IoT and distributed devices. Uh, this is uh, our Onero project. And one of the things that we've been focused on is how do we have a distributed framework across this operating system so devices can connect directly with each other without having to go towards the cloud. Uh, this is a much better user experience, better for performance, uh, but perhaps more importantly, uh, big, big savings in energy costs. Now, one of the things that we've also been doing is taking a look at all these different open source technologies across those domains and applying them into different use cases and scenarios as well. Uh, so for example, here in Ireland, uh, we've been taking our cloud and AI systems and putting them on the edge, in this case around uh, smart buoys uh, in the oceans off the coast of Ireland. And this is in order to help protect marine wildlife uh, through our Smart Whales Sound Project. It turns out that sound pollution, uh, if you take a look at container ships and other uh, traffic from ships uh, going through these oceans, has a hugely disruptive impact on marine life uh, because they're very dependent on sound and sonar in terms of how do they navigate and how do they behave. Uh, in fact, sound pollution has a bigger impact on whales uh, than uh, overfishing and pollution combined. Uh, and so when you take a look at uh, what we can do, we're training these systems using AI to detect these marine uh, wildlife and then to be able to give early detection uh, and warnings uh, to ships as they come in so that we can try to live much better with our marine wildlife and to understand what's going on. And so this is an another important thing in terms of how do we start to bring our open source technologies together uh, in order to protect our world. And then here at Huawei, uh, you know, we're focused not just on what can we do outside, but even ourselves, uh, we have very, very strong commitments that we've made uh, in order to be a responsible corporate citizen. You know, whether reducing our global carbon footprints or even uh, looking to our suppliers uh, in terms of how do they operate uh, their sustainability. And one of the key things that we're doing is we're trying to take advantage of open source and put as much of this into open source as possible. Because in this way, we can make sure that not only do we bring advantages and savings to our own business, but we can share the effects with other people because this is a shared concern that we all have to work with and do together. And so, I really encourage uh, all of you because you know, here in Dublin, we have a gathering of some of the uh, leading open source technologists around the world. We all have a part to play in terms of how do we bring open source together to build a much more sustainable future. If you have any interest in some of the open source projects that I've spoken about today, or if you'd just like to learn more about some of these issues, I invite you to come by our Huawei booth and you can talk to us more. Thank you very much.